Hello Shooters, uh, today's video was at a request from uh, some guys in Montana and their request was that I do a video on first, second, and third line gear. Now, uh, so first of all, thanks for the request guys. Uh, and I know some of you others have made some requests and those are coming, believe me, I'm working on them. Um, uh, but the request today is for first line, second line, and third line gear. Now this is for field use, okay? Um, Second line, third line, and maybe to some extent first line is going to change if you're going to be uh, vehicle-borne operations or for urban operations it's going to be different. First line is going to probably be uh, close to the same all along, but uh, second line and third line is going to vary greatly depending upon uh, your circumstance and your situation. So this is for field use. This is for like patrolling in the woods or the desert or the jungle or, or wherever. Um, this is not for urban use. Uh, this is not for vehicle-borne use. Uh, and this is obviously not for waterborne use either. So this is for field use. So let's talk about first line, second line, third line. Um, first line is the stuff that you're going to have with you all the time. Uh, your pocket knife, a way to build a fire, uh, your compass, uh, map, um, uh, 550 cord on your boonie hat or whatever. Um, that's the stuff you're going to have with you all the time. Second line gear, in essence, is your fighting gear. That's where you're going to carry all your magazines, um, your heavier first aid equipment, blah, blah, blah. And your third line gear, that's your, uh, that's your sustainment of your living gear. That's like your, your house, your rucksack. That's where you're going to carry uh, any extra clothes if you're going to carry them. That's where you're going to carry the majority of your food. That's where you're going to carry uh, some extra ammo, you know, batteries, blah, blah, blah. That's your supply line is your rucksack. And the theory is that uh, if you're in first line, second line, third line, if you have to, uh, if you get ambushed or whatever, and you've got to dump your rucksack, you still can fight. Uh, you dump your rucksack for mobility. You can still fight with your second line gear. If things get really bad, you're all out of ammo. You got no uh, way to get new ammo. Your rifle's been shot or blown up or whatever. You dump your second line gear. There's no reason to keep it anymore. And then you got then you're down to your first line gear and then you're then you're uh, escaping and evading you're you're just trying to get away from the enemy get back to some place where you can uh, you know kit back up and and uh, get some more gear so you're you're in survival mode so first line gear is survival gear um, it's what's going to start a fire for you it's going to what you know you'll have a, a pocket knife with you uh, a compass it's what you need absolutely need to survive a way to carry some water so what we'll do right now is we're going to go over uh, the first line gear and then we'll go over some second line gear and some third line gear. Okay shooters, let's go over some first line gear. Remember this is the stuff that you're going to rely upon in an emergency. You've got to have some type of multi-tool or a Swiss Army knife. This is a model that does have a pair of pliers in it so I don't need to carry a multi-tool. And it has a, you know the blades and blah blah blah. Everybody knows Swiss Army Knife's a good kit. Um, and you dummy cord this to you. Actually put this through your trouser. You put this through your trouser loop. And then you, you know, you, so it doesn't ever leave you, leave your body. Um, also, you have to have the ability to start fire. Uh, so this is a BIC. Um, you carry one of those. But uh, I'll tell you, I'm a real believer in this blast match. And the reason is you can operate this thing one-handed. Um, these things, these, uh, these bits, you know, they can fail. They can, uh, not light. Uh, this thing, you know, some people carry the flint and steel. But if, if you're E and E in, in other words, if you're, uh, if you've dropped all your fighting gear and you're, you're hightailing it, odds are you're probably going to be hurt. Um, and so this, this blast match allows you to start a fire one handed. It, uh, good kit. Uh, so you're also going to dummy that dummy cord that to your trouser also and put that in your pocket or something. Um, then uh, you've got to carry this because if you're uh, if you're escaping and evading if you're just out there e and e and you want to make sure and keep your your face cammed up and your hands and your arms or whatever. So that goes in one of your trouser that goes in your one of your pockets. Uh, you've got to have a compass with you uh, and a map. Uh, GPS won't do you any good because it's going to run out of batteries. You don't have any spare batteries or, you know, you dropped it or whatever. You drop this, it still works. It doesn't require any batteries. Uh, so, you, and you dummy cord this. You don't put this around your neck. 
All right, don't dummy cord anything around your neck. This is 550 cord. That means it will take 550 pounds to break it. Your neck will break long before then. So don't put this around your neck. You put this through uh, uh, you know, a buttonhole on your blouse, on your jacket or whatever, and you put this through there, and then it kind of you know, hangs on your... On your uh, then you put this in your pocket. Uh, you got to have a means of carrying water. Um, you know, some guys do the old, uh, you know, carry a condom and you put that in a sock or whatever to protect it, but you run by a blackberry bush and there goes your water. This thing is pretty strong as platypus. It doesn't take up any, it, it does. It weighs virtually nothing when it's in your pocket until you put water in it. Uh, that's good stuff. Uh, I always carried, uh, there's some uh, uh, cotton in there um, and some fishing line and some safety pins use expedient hooks if you need to or for you can use safety pins for a lot of stuff that's why I carried them uh, got 550 cord on the boonie hat here 550 cord is an amazing you can make snares out of the inside of this stuff you can lash things together you gotta have 550 cord there's about if you daisy chain it and I'll do a video on how to daisy chain uh, there's about 10 feet of, of uh, 550 cord on this boonie hat uh, notice the booty hat, boonie hat's been cut down I know some guys like the big old floppy sombrero type, but really those, uh, they, <laughs> I, I don't like them. And a lot of guys, you know, do what I used to do. They don't like them either because they'll obstruct, they obstruct your vision, they obstruct your hearing. This short brim does a good job of keeping the rain off your face and the sun off your face, but doesn't obstruct, obstruct your vision or obstruct your hearing. So you cut the brim down. Uh, and you got to have a, you got to have a big knife of some tor some type. This is a Randall number one. Um... Uh, and I've got a, a primary uh, way so that the blade doesn't fall out and here's my secondary way so you've always got to have two ways to keep something on your body um, I, I strap this around my leg and there's a, uh, uh, a rubber band here uh, because this is 550 cord also and uh, you don't want to if you, if you fall down a, a ravine or something you get a, a tree stuck in there you don't want that cutting your leg off so that's your safety there. It'll it'll break, and you carry a couple of those in your pocket or whatever. There's a sharpening stone in there. I like it. I like it dropped off the belt a little bit. So uh, um, this is a this is a a belt extender. So it drops down just a little bit. Gets gets out of the way of the belt. Uh, another part of thing a first line can be your handgun. Some guys don't carry a handgun. If you do, that would be on your first line gear. Um, and uh, the only holster to get for uh, uh, for this kind of stuff is a H S G I high speed gear. Um, I'll show you one of those in just a sec. For for field use, this is the only holster worth looking at. Is the one made by H S G I. All others are going to chafe. They're going to slide around funny on your leg. This one for I don't know for whatever reason the this one doesn't and I'm not the only one that has this opinion you check out other forums and stuff and this is uh, for field use guys swear by these and they swear at all other kind of drop leg holsters um, so uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna wear a handgun on your um, first line gear and you need it dropped off your belt uh, HSGI is the only way to go really the only way to go so uh, this is that. That's the first line gear. This is what you keep on your body at all times. And when uh, when things get really really bad, this is what you rely upon to save your life, so you can get back to uh, friendlier places and uh, get some help. Okay, shooter. So this uh, this is the rest of the first line gear. We've got the boonie hat on with the shorter brim. Doesn't obstruct my eyesight. Doesn't obstruct my hearing. Enough to keep the sun and the rain off. It's got the 550 cord on there. Uh, gloves. Gloves are an indispensable part of field operations, period. Uh, so if you fall into a briar patch or uh, whatever, you're, these are going to protect your hands. So you, you got to have gloves on. Also, gloves cover up your watch. A watch is a must-have on an operation because a lot of things are uh, coordinated maybe with other units due to time. So uh, I've also part of my first line gear is this. Uh, it's a tri triangle bandage that I wear around my throat like that. I know a lot of guys wear shamogs. I'm not a shamog wearer. I think a shamog is way too big. 
I mean, it's almost as big as a, you know, as a poncho liner. Uh, so this is just the right size. You can also, you know, it's just good enough to get in a, a stream or a puddle to rinse off and cool off your neck or whatever. You can also, you know, filter water with it. There's a bunch of uses for this. Oh, you know, if you're going to, you know, rob a bank or whatever, you can put that up. Um, and, okay, here we have, here we can, you can see this, uh, See how I got that loop through there? That's for my compass. My compass is in my pocket here. Um, uh, another thing that I forgot to show you on that board, the first line board, which you've, you've got to have a, a light source. And by a light source, this is all I'm talking about. That's all you need. You don't need a surefire 50,000 candle power, 50 million lumen. Uh, all you need is just a little teeny bit of light so you can see and uh, and also so that it doesn't travel very far when you're in E&E &E mode uh, you don't want to announce to the world with a with a strobe or a you know or a, a spotlight where you are um, so this that completes first line gear uh, this is the stuff you always have on you um, this is the stuff that uh, you take off last because um, this is the stuff that's going to keep you alive that's going to help you survive until you can get get back to a friendly area. So that's the purpose of first line gear. Up next is second line gear. Okay, shooters, next up is second line gear. This is your fighting gear. Okay, this is a uh, this is a USGI Alice gear. Um, this is what I started off with. Uh, of course, I did some mods to it. I Changed out all the hardware for 550 cord and zip ties. Uh, you, you cut all that hardware off this thing and uh, you cut off over a pound of weight and just unnecessary weight. You take all those little clippy things out of the back of the magazine uh, carriers and your poncho, I mean your, your canteen, your butt pack, and you replace that with uh, zip ties or 550 cord or even those malice clips or whatever. Um, same thing with the butt pack. Can you take those metal clips off of everything, and you get rid of them? They're they're a waste of time. They make noise. They squeak. They can shine. There is absolutely no benefit to those at all. Um, this makes the rig lighter, makes it more comfortable. There's no those metal things aren't digging into your sides or whatever. Uh, so that's that's the way to run Alice if you're going to run an Alice rig. Uh, the, the the good thing about Alice, there's a couple of things about Alice. It's cheap. Um, it's cool in the summertime because it's uh, it's an H harness and it, it, it's it's off your body. Um, the bad part is it's got a high flop factor. When you run with Alice gear, this thing's flopping all over the place and beating the crap out of you. But there's plus and minus to all all gear. So that's the that's that's the minus to this gear is it's got a high flop factor. Um, but it still does the job. It's been doing the job for decades. Let me show you now. Uh, this was this is LBE, typically load bearing equipment. Now I'll show you my LBV, my load bearing vest. Okay, this is my load bearing vest, and I don't buckle my load bearing vest or my LBE up. Uh, they they get too hot. They're constrictive when I hit. You know when you have to go prone, they're a pain in the butt because you got magazines digging into your sides. Uh, so I leave them a little. I leave them open. So if I hit the ground, they're they're good to go. Um, the pluses to the LBV is it's much easier to carry more weight this way than an LBE. The weight distribution is greater. Um, you can the back is is slick typically, so it's easier to uh, to wear a ruck. It's really difficult to wear a ruck with an L with an Alice gear. I have a YouTube video on that. I actually put my Alice on my rucksack. Um, this allows you to carry more stuff more comfortably. The, the downside is it's, it's hotter. If, it, if you're in a hot environment, uh, this is going to be hotter than an Alice rig. So it just depends upon uh, what kind of environment you're operating in. It's going to depend upon what gear I would suggest that you get. I typically gravitate towards the LBV because of its comfort, unless it's hot. If it's really hot, I, I go back to the old H harness. Uh, so this is a custom rig by a guy that's no longer in the business. It's extremely high quality. Um, it also it carries a camel back in the back and got uh, you know really good gear. 
So, um, next I'll show a chest rig. This is my chest rig. It's a Black Hawk uh, Strike Commando Recon Seal Delta Force SAS. You know, it's <laughs> some marketing name like that. Uh, chest rigs. These aren't really made for field operations. They're made for vehicle-borne operations. Uh, the plus for vehicle-borne operations is they usually don't have anything on the sides or the backs so you can sit in a vehicle. Um, they are cool because your back's exposed, uh, but and you can wear a ruck with them because your back's exposed, but the weight is here on your chest, and uh, your body's meant to carry weight around your hips better than it is here on your chest. Uh, the LBV, the Alice gear, and the, uh, the LBV that I have, the straps come across the chest, uh, so the weight is distributed evenly across your shoulders, and the weight's distributed around your waist. Uh, with a chest rig, all the weight is right here. So when you're, you know, you almost feel like you need something on your back to kind of even the weight out, because you can tip forward real easy. When you're getting up, getting up and down, you know, like when you're, when you're crawling around doing reconnaissance or whatever, chest rigs really suck, because they're just adding weight to your chest area, and you're doing uh, massive push-ups. Just, uh, just for nothing, really. So for uh, for field operations, I would shy away from a chest rig. I'd stick with the Alice uh, gear or with the with an LBV, something that distributes the. So the magazines are around your waist. Magazines, your water, your first aid, blah blah blah, is around your waist, not up here on your chest. Chest rigs are for vehicle operations or just even maybe urban operations. So now let's talk a little bit about third line gear. Okay, shooters, that leaves us with third line gear, and this is your rucksack. This is where you carry your sleeping bag, extra food, extra water, extra batteries, uh, you know, things of that nature. This is what you re resupply yourself, this is what you resupply your second line gear with. So you'll carry extra am in, ammo in here, um, and uh, this is your living. So first line, survival. Second line, fighting third line living slash resupply so those are the three different lines and that's how you the order in which you jettison them you'll jettison your third line first if you need to you'll jettison your jettison your second line if you absolutely have to and you'll always have your first line gear with you this this first second third line principle and philosophy has been around for a long time for many decades it's proven it works uh, i didn't come up with it um it, it, it's proven and it works. So I'd, I'd, I'd encourage you to follow it if you're doing field operations. If you have any questions, post them below. If you have any suggestions, post them below. If you want me to do a, a video like I did this one, by all means, uh, email me, uh, Facebook me, uh, Twitter me, whatever. There's a billion ways to get a hold of me. If you like what I do, please like, subscribe, and share. Appreciate those. Appreciate all the watches, all the likes, all the subscribes. Appreciate the comments. Uh, and that'll do it for today. Uh, have a good day. See you next time.